And how's it going everyone? Jonathan here with Boston Collectors. Today's review is all about Finnick Shan as seen in the Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian Season 2. Her appearance in The Bad Batch is fairly close to this version of her, so you could get away with adding her to that display. If not, a bounty hunter shelf works just as well. While I didn't pick up this figure because of her being featured in The Mandalorian, in fact, after seeing how well she could hold her own against Cad Bane, Hunter, and Wrecker to name a few, I really wanted her in the collection. So, here she is, and I can't be more excited. To catch up here on the box art, it's your standard issued Star Wars box that we've all come to know. We've had quite a few DX releases recently, so for you newcomers, this is what you should expect outside of those. And with the box out of the way, we can go ahead and start our review. As always, consider subscribing to the channel and like this video for us if you enjoy what we do. Let's go ahead and continue. Right out of the box, Finnick is equipped with a pair of neutral hands. I also noticed the material used for the molding is a lot softer than what we're used to. Next, we have a pair of fists. Considering these are all new sculpts for Finnick, Hot Toys did an awesome job making the molding appear as leather. Not to mention, a huge plus for me considering they come in pairs. Moving on, we end up with a hand that really required a pair, but we sadly didn't receive. More on that later. For now, its function is used for a few other accessories beginning with the concealed dagger found in her modified rifle. It's painted to appear as metal, so don't expect any die-cast material here. Apart from that, they captured the look of her weapon pretty nicely. There's a subtle wash for a standard used appearance, but there's a small issue when it comes to slotting it back in the weapon. More on that in a bit. Outside of the dagger, she can also hold one of the three New Republic credits included in the box. For these to be as tiny as they are, they're packed with immense detail. I just wish I had more. <laughs> I don't want to say that's on Hot Toys per se, but it's enough to get the idea across. The credits are then placed in the string pouch, which is another accessory we saw in the Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian. You can have her holding it in your display or gently tied around her belt. For the final pair of hands, Finnick came with a pair of trigger hands seen here with her modified DL-44 blaster. It's a model we know, but we can't say we've seen this exact blaster before. Considering Finnick modified her sniper, I can't say I'm surprised she altered this weapon either. As per Hot Toys' usual skill, the dry brush weathering and the darker wash does a phenomenal job at making her weapon feel used. Not only that, the gold accents separate the gunmetal color from the brown handle in a beautiful way. If she isn't using it in your display, you can simply holster it on her right thigh. And I say simply because you don't have to break in the holster for this figure. Just note the iron sight when storing it. You don't want to harm the pleather too soon. Although she won't have it holstered for me, I don't really care for the way it makes her sides flare out further. And speaking of modified weapons, we also have Fennec's MK modified sniper rifle included with her release. This is another brand new piece that we haven't seen before and specific for Fennec's needs. The detail work throughout this piece is impeccable. I almost wish they went ahead and made all of the pieces articulated because of how well built this weapon is. I can't deduct points though. <laughs> it's just so good to see in hand is all. Fun fact, and don't ask me why I found myself doing this because I don't actually have an answer. <laughs> you can look through Crosshair's sniper scope, but you can't through Phoenix. I just thought that was interesting. Now, this is where not having the pair of throwing hands don't make sense. She unsheaths the dagger from the right, yet we only have a left hand for it. And it does get worse, because the dagger is way too small to slot into the butt of the sniper. You just kind of throw it in. There is a positive though, because I'm happy to see Hot Toys went ahead and made it retractable while also featuring the scanning drone fixed in the butt. I 
just don't care for the dagger slot. If space is limited, you can have the weapon strap over her shoulder or crossbody, depending on preference. The rectangular pieces found along the strap are glued on, so I wouldn't play with these. For the final accessory, we have a bottle of spotchka in a woven pattern style bag. The neutral hands work fine for this piece, believe it or not. For the last pieces included in the box, we have the character base featuring a tinfoil sticker of Fennec Shan's name. And on top, a textured sticker indicative of the sands of Tatooine. Fennec isn't flying around anytime soon, so Hot Toys included a crotch holder which is a little too tall for her. I find taking out the crotch piece and placing the stand between Fennec and her skirt piece a little bit better. And a few firm shakes for stability check. <laughs> there are previous accessories that can pair up well with what's included. The Camtono and credits being one. A Beskar ingot can also fit inside of the woven pouch with the credits. Or, if Phoenix bargaining with Mando in your display, she can hold a Beskar ingot as well. Or, maybe a successful hunt landed her a Camtono of her own. Her trigger hands can hold it up without an issue. And recreating the fight with Hunter is tricky, but doable. When it comes to using his blade, her grip is a little too wide, but again, it is doable. And now that we're done, it's adding all of the pieces to make her stand out in your display. I wanted more of a bounty hunter look for me, so I went ahead and threw everything around for more of a badass look. Don't forget to like our video if you haven't already. There's more on the way, but for now, let's discuss her portrait. Fennec isn't just another Anakin, Luke, or clone joining the display. Ming Na Wen's likeness is an all new challenge for Hot Toys, and Tao Kang knocked it out of the park yet again with his work. Alongside her portrait, Hot Toys included a wire to bend her braid, which enabled us to alter her look for display. It can be a little tricky if you don't remove her portrait first. If you find her braid floating upward, it, it's a simple fix. I find tiny micro adjustments can go a long way with making it appear lifelike. And don't worry, there are tiny holes hidden in her hair to allow the wire to breathe while posing. Speaking of the hair, the design is beautiful. I'd suggest not being overly picky about the lines not being complete near the end. I'd go cross-eyed if I had to paint this hair as often as the workers had to. <laughs> Regardless of that, there's an immense amount of detail when it comes to the pattern of the braids, the strings throughout the pattern, to the smaller tugs of hair at the root of her scalp. Not to mention the flyaways, which I wish were a little tighter and not so... wingish. The portrait doesn't feature the Sir system, but... I feel as if they made up for it in a unique way that I can't really argue against. Especially considering just how much time had to go into creating her hair sculpt alone. If tussling with the braid is too much for you, you can have it resting down her back. I'd understand. As we work our way to the portrait, I want to point out the subtle scarring along her left eye. It's slightly raised and painted in a way to indicate scarring versus drawing it on. It may not be a lot to you, but I think it's kind of cool. The portrait and the hair bring the rest of the figure together perfectly. While I wish the surf system were included, it's difficult to say how I'd implement it. So I can't exactly deduct points here. But if this isn't Ming-Na Wen's likeness, I'd don't know what is. The slight puffiness below the eyes, the gentle furrowed brow, to the smaller wrinkles along the lips is just beautifully done. The helmet is another tale. Having a standalone helmet is great, but I can't risk damaging the portrait to keep it on. It's already unnerving to do. I ended up gently scarring her ears because the foam wasn't placed properly inside of the helmet. 
When the nerves settle and the pain subside from any possible damage, she looks really good. The weathering and design is great, and I can't take anything from the team on that front. The orange isn't too punchy, and the black and gray paint application catches the light beautifully. The wash found along the grooves of the design gives it a used feel, along with the subtle nicks and dings around the helmet. I also want to note the helmet doesn't hinge like it does in the show. I love this look, and it's preferred for me, because I like my figures ready for combat, so to speak. I wish Hot Toys considered including a helmeted portrait for this release, though. At that point, it could have hinged and allowed collectors like me to display her with her helmet on. At this rate, she never will. But wow, does she look cool. It doesn't take away from the overall portrait design for me because it's still flawless, in my opinion. For me, she'll be holding her bucket. Let us know down below how you plan to display her in your collection. Beginning with the ankles, it's split cut, but it is rather limited. As for the knees, they're double jointed, which really surprised me. Even though the articulation is limited, I like that the boots are at least split cut. Well, that and the obvious design is just really cool to see in six scale form. The patterns found throughout the outfit are remarkable and a true testament to Hot Toys' capability of putting out the best when it comes to their work. They even went as far as to put wiring in the outer portion of the clothing. And if you need more convincing, there you go. <laughs> All of the praise should go to the costuming department, yes, but we have to admit, being able to scale down her design to this level is truly fascinating. There is a feature that I do wish they did a little bit better, though. It would have been a little more, considering a lot of collectors wouldn't show this, but Phoenix midsection is more like mediocre. I guess they did enough for the idea of it, but I had high hopes for something similar to Solo Maul's legs for Phoenix midsection. The articulation here is extremely limited. For such a beautiful piece, I don't know how to feel. As far as the midsection of the figure, there is a swivel at both thighs and the previously discussed limitations of her waist. Although, her arms are double-jointed, which is a huge plus for a woman-presenting figure. We've discussed the beauty of the tailoring previously, but there isn't enough praise for it. I will say, Phoenix release just goes to show you can have a fully articulated body without harming the fabric. No more excuses. And not to mention, another plus being a swivel at the bicep. However, there is no excuse for not having a butterfly joint at the shoulder. Not sure why that's a thing. And there's very little articulation with the single jointed neck. For the smaller details, you want to make sure this piece is placed properly. Out of the box, it wasn't for me, but this is the right way to have it. There are a lot of positives, and I do feel they outweigh the negatives. But this piece, like others, isn't perfect. In closing, while there are a few questionable decisions to this release as previously noted, I can't take away from the beauty of this piece. To me, it's like having a posable statue. Everything looks beautiful from the outside of it. Out of the box, you can't help but marvel at the tailoring and the portrait design. This is a masterpiece of a figure in hand, and arguably top three so far this year alone. While I do have my gripes with the decisions made, she's a strong 8 out of 10 for me. I understand some of the choices for cost, such as the extra helmeted portrait I mentioned, but the sticker-like abdomen just feel a little cheap. I get it at the same time, because who's really showing that? I guess I expected better, but then you have the loose dagger in the butt of the rifle. Regardless of my gripes, I'm happy to have her representation in the collection. Because I loved how she could go toe to toe with the likes of Cad Bane and Hunter from the Bad Batch. Not to mention her character looks really cool. I'm still waiting for my Cad Bane to come in sadly, but in due time. 
For now, hopefully you all enjoyed today's review. Like this video if you did, and subscribe for more. And as always, it doesn't matter what we rate the figure. If you like it, we love it. This is Jonathan with Boston Collectors, and we'll catch you next time.